developers, my book is here, hot off the press, Real Tough Software by Real Tough Candy. This is my fourth book. It is my fourth number one new release. This book hit number one before it was even published. I couldn't believe it. I wrote this book, <sighs> let me rewind. I wanted to document my coding journey and I wanted to have proof of it. Now I have journals, I've kept a journal since I was seven years old. I have journals from throughout the decades. So I know my story. I have the memory of a drunk goldfish, so I need to write things down a lot. I already know my story, but I wanted to put this story on this paper as a testimony because some people consider software development to be just a nine to five. That's totally cool, but I don't. I don't consider it a nine to five at all. I consider it much more than a vocation. This, I consider it more than a calling. It's, it's, it's all of those things, it's, it's none of those things. It kind of saved my life. And I wanted to share my story, and I wanted to testify. It's on paperback. It's on Kindle. If you can't afford Kindle, if you can't afford the paperback, it's on Kindle Unlimited. So check that out. If you can't afford Kindle Unlimited, it's also in the Kindle Lending Library. So if you have a friend who has Kindle Unlimited or buys this on Kindle, ask them to share it with you. They can lend it to you for free. So in this book, I talk about that spark that I ignored for many years. And there were many reasons I ignored that spark. But one of the big ones was because I just thought it wouldn't be a good culture fit. Back in my day, we didn't have YouTube. A lot of people don't think that this career field meshes with their personality, with where they come from, with their family history, with their family education, history of family education, with their own education. There are a lot of things in each of our lives that often make us wonder, oh, am I really cut out for this? And you see a lot of people who are really good, the really good programmers. I mean, of course they recognize they're really good at what they do. They deserve that recognition. But you don't see a lot of day-to-day -day programmers, everyday programmers. There are a few now on YouTube. But there are millions of people in this career field, but we only hear a few of their stories. And oftentimes their stories are so foreign to what we've experienced that you just don't see yourself doing any of this stuff. That was my case. And I know that's the case for many other people. And so I talk about that. I also was hesitant to join this career field because of my perceptions, not just the cultural thing, but my perception that it was boring, um, it wasn't creative, uh, it was square. Now some of those things may be stereotypes, but what I've discovered coming into this career field, you can do whatever you want. I mean, anything. There is no, what other discipline can you really say that? And have it not be an exaggeration. I mean, you can build anything. If you can dream it, you can build it. And the rate of development, the rate of these things, the rate of the evolution of code and web development especially is absolutely mind-blowing. Web development for me is the most exciting, but it's not just that. We have game development. We have um, IoT. We have cloud. We have desktop. We have many other implementations available to us and probably many more we haven't even discovered yet or developed. And I, I never even saw one one hundredth, one one thousandth of the stuff that, can I rewind? Can I, can I just rewind this? I don't want to cut this. I just didn't think you could build a dream going like this and going like this in your own home with just an internet connection. And you don't even need an internet connection. You can, you can code with pen and paper and make something and then 
go to your library or whatever. It's just, it's become so much more accessible and so much more tangible. And I didn't see that before I started exploring it. Um, and as I talk about in the book, I started coding around 2014, like seriously exploring it in 2014, gave it up for a bit, kind of got a little off track. I was working on my master's at the time too. Um, but then in 2016, I started freelancing. I talk about freelancing. 2018, I got my first enterprise developer job. Um, and I also talk about some jobs that were not so good. Bartending. And I'm going to tell you something. Here's a little spoiler alert. I want to see if I can... Should I read you something? Like, Is that lame, reading an excerpt from my own book? Let's see. I'll just tell you. I already know how this book ends. Um, I was bartending for a while because freelancing wasn't going so good for me. And I wanted to get enough money to the point I wanted to build up my stash so I could also freelance and then eventually freelance sustainably. I just didn't have that initial cash flow that I needed. So I started bartending and let me give you a little hint. Let me give you a little pro tip. If you're only learning software development, whatever discipline, um, whatever language, if you're only learning it for money, don't bother. It takes decades to become an expert in a language, okay? It takes years to become just proficient with the basics. Why would you do that when you can go learn how to crack a bottle of bud, pop the top off in two seconds, and make... $400, $500 a night. I know people in Minneapolis who are doing just that and make six figures, okay? Some of them have GED. Some of them haven't even graduated high school. They're making good money. And that's always been the case with bartending. So you don't have to listen to me. Um, you know, talk with other people, but if you're just in development for the money, why? Why waste all that time? The reason I got out of bartending and came into software is because bartending sucks your soul. You listen to drunk people's stories. You witness things you wish you hadn't have witnessed. You clean up things you wish you hadn't have seen. There are 20 to 30 unidentifiable substances on that toilet cover. Dude, I'm good. Yeah, you get paid a lot, but a part of you dies every night you clean that bathroom. It's disgusting. Software development offers me a challenge, and I'm not going to go drone on and on, but that's what I talk about in this book. I talk about bartending. I talk about when I volunteered at the Wildlife Rehab Center and these other jobs. Talk about, oh my God, working at the United States Postal Service. <laughs> it's in the book. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I had to share this as a testimony that I'm here. And this is my career field too. And every time I open a code editor, every time I push a project, every time I log on to GitHub, Every time I work on some open source stuff, every time I go to my Discord, make a video, publish a blog post that relates to software development, I feel good about my life and I feel validated and I get paid to do it. It's awesome. There are some dirty sides. There is a dirty side of there is a dirty side to everything and I talk about those moments too. I talk about them on this channel and in this book. But for the most part, I don't regret it. I want to thank everybody for the pre-order for making this a number one new release before it was even published. That's insane to me. Um, this is my best book yet. This is my best book yet. If you've read How to Get a Job in Web Development, Freelance Newbie, Tiny YouTube, those are all how-to manuals. This is not. Uh, this is not going to teach you how to get a job, how to code JavaScript, or how to train your dragon. This is my story. And like I said, it's on paperback, Kindle, Kindle Unlimited. Check it out. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.